So uh-huh. that's my country. And I'm Danish, so I should say that my English is not perfect. Ah, but uh, I'll try my best. <laughs> it's fantastic. Are you kidding me? If I had, if I could speak any other language as good as you're speaking English right now, I'd be very happy. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, I was excited to have you on because of your thyroid work and because of your connection to Ray Pete and and everything you uh, research and do you know, regarding his work and your work. So you're a biochemist that helps people Mm -hmm. in the way of of thyroid regulation and hormone regulation, right? Mm -hmm. So what I want to know why you, why you came to work, being a biochemist and and knowing all that, you know, Mm -hmm. why did you come down to thyroid? Like what made you a thyroid uh, centric person? (laughs) Well, um, it stems from my own health story, right? So I was very unlucky when I was like, maybe, you know, maybe I was already born with it. And that's what I found that that's actually the case for many people. They have just a slightly, they're born or they, they are struggling with their whole life for just a slightly, a tiny bit of hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid function. And then something happens. So in my life, what happened was I took, uh, I went to France as uh, to work as an au pair. And there, you know, I lived uh, not with the family, as some people do, but I lived separately in a very moldy and dark apartment. Mm. And I got first one infection, like a very, uh, like with fever and uh, throat and infection and we a severe cold. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I got over that. And then the next cold came, you know, so I got very sick one time after the other while staying in that dark, moldy apartment. And then I went back to Denmark after finishing that work there and um, I didn't get well. So something has had just triggered my thyroid to get really low. Mm. And it was a long process to actually find out that I had low thyroid function because I was just as is the case for many people that have low thyroid or just a little bit low thyroid. You are still normal on the blood test in many cases or just a slightly bit low so the doctors don't really do anything so it was a long journey for me to actually get the diagnosis Mm. (laughs) of low thyroid function yeah so can Mm. i ask how old you were when you were the when you were an au pair yeah yeah i i was um i was just i mean just finishing high school so 19 20 so really young right i mean you shouldn't be filled with like have like a huge range of hormonal imbalances when you're 20 years old right so uh, um i uh, actually uh my period stopped completely wow. uh, you know so i had a lot of imbalances mm-hmm. um yeah and so you attribute that to multiple things or do you think that the mold on its own is capable of destroying your, your you know um irregulating your your thyroid like that or do you feel like there were other components as well well i think there's more components like the mold is of course may i've always always been as a child also allergic you know allergic to certain foods allergic to allergic to perfumes and you know uh, very sensitive skin and very sensitive in general (laughs) with with all these allergy things and then i think for me mold was very serious that was a really big trigger because that's you know about a lot of even not just a lot of uh, the hypothyroid symptoms came but especially skin symptoms actually came to me also from living in that uh, wow. apartment you know very like uh, allergies on the skin uh-huh. so I don't know there's and then of course you know not taking that much care of yourself not respecting that I was tired and maybe all the infections you know I should have slept more than I mm-hmm. did mm-hmm. so I push push myself to do more than I should have so that's also a stress factor um and you know my diet was terrible. I did all the wrong things, <laughs> you know. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I had no fat in my diet. You know, I tried to b- become lean and was only eating like low fat, high sugar things because that was what you were told. You could have sh- a lot of sugar and no fat and yeah, possibly no protein too. And I yeah, so I had a lot of digestive issues too. Actually, that was one of my first very serious symptoms that was like yeah digestive Um, issues 
You know, just a side yeah. thought. I, I I was a model when I was younger and I was living in Japan and my roommate was um, Danish and she, yeah. and I remember I, we would wake up in the morning and I would want like eggs and, you know, coffee yeah. and toast. And she would have yeah. toast with like Nutella and sprinkles on top. And she would eat <laughs> sugar for breakfast. She would eat desserts yeah. for breakfast. It was fascinating. Yeah. And I yeah. said, it's so unusual that you do this. And she said, everybody yeah. does it. Everyone in, in Maybe Denmark. Maybe it was a Scandinavian or European thing that we thought in, in our country, it was very promoted that you could just eat carbs, a lot of, um, you know, <laughs> sugar and not get fat. There was yeah. this nutritionist they very much in the media at that time. So maybe that was what she was on. That's to. funny. Yeah, know. maybe. <laughs> but uh, so you said other components. And I think something that I struggled with as well mm -hmm. is even just from childhood being born, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sick. I was born sick. And so I had these gut mm -hmm. issues and ear, nose and throat issues yeah. from a very early age. And I think some people can be exposed to mold and, and do better off than someone yeah. like yourself mm -hmm. and myself. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a big trigger, I think, is just there's uh, mm -hmm. underlying weaknesses in some of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then I think a lot of the problem is that a lot of people, um, when they, for instance, has been exposed to mold or parasites or uh, they have been bitten by a, a tick, like the, the, what's that called? Lyme, the, Lyme the Lyme disease, disease. yeah. In my in my view, and I have a lot of clients like that, you know, they had something, something has happened. It could be mold, it could be the tick, it could be Lyme, it could be another infection, it could be coronavirus. Mm. But then what happens is what I've learned from Dr. Ray Peter, maybe we should talk a little bit about him too. Yeah, but for sure. That is, that is, that it's actually the trigger. But now you're actually out of that trigger, but you're stuck with all your hormonal imbalances, right? Mm. So you're stuck with that. Uh, the mold triggered my hypothyroidism. I got, or maybe it was a little hypothyroid from birth, you know, with the mm -hmm. allergies and a little bit like, uh, yeah. And then mm. I you got this mold exposure and that triggered it, right? Mm -hmm. For other people, it might be something else. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so then you started to study, uh, you went into biochemistry, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then um, when did you realize that the thyroid was, was really, uh, was hypo? When did you realize it was even playing into all of these things that you yeah. were dealing with? Yeah, actually, I, I was so sick when I was, I came back from France. I was so sick that I actually uh for a couple of years i didn't study so uh, and and that's what in the period where i you know went to the doctors in denmark and, uh, and luckily is is pretty much free every everything in the healthcare system right so that was uh -huh. lucky because I, I think i tried all the specialists and they couldn't figure it out and actually what happens happened was that i actually also used a lot of money on alternative a lot of alternative treatment that really not really helped me but there was one guy in the whole alternative uh, community and i had a consultation with him and he had he was originally a dentist and he had written a lot of books on vitamins and things like that and he mm -hmm. took one look at me and he said i think you're low thyroid i can see you know he could just he could just see it like the way i presented with this i think i was tired slow speech of uh, hair thinning uh, mm -hmm. allergies constipation you know cold um, so he thought he's told me go into this uh, private clinic in Copenhagen and get tested even further for hypothyroidism because I had been tested before right. but you know then they run ran some further testing and then it was I was diagnosed so it was actually just me traveling the whole medical system and the medical system and actually a guy from the alternative community pointed me to that and wow. that's why I ended up in that clinic then it happened that the clinic in Copenhagen, which should be, uh, they were supposed to be like specialists in, in hypothyroidism. They also had something with heart disease that were also that that was also a speciality of, of theirs. Mm -hmm. But the thing ha the, what happened was that the guy or the the doctor that actually had uh, had all the knowledge of how to treat low thyroid function had just retired, and then there was a new doctor like quite young and he was very unsure of how to go about it 
Ah. And, you know, I got some medication from the United States. And because in Denmark, we had another one that wasn't what they really recommended. It was very complex. And I found that um, I think they mentioned armor thyroid and I got some armor thyroid, which is one of the th natural desiccated thyroid medications, but they didn't really know how to use it. Oh. So I hopped on the Internet and uh, that's when I found Dr. Ray Pete, like ah. his information. Mm -hmm. And then I, at that point, I don't think he was that known. It was around in the beginning of two, uh, the south, 2000s. Oh, wow. So I just uh, grabbed the phone uh, and, uh, and he took it. He, he, he you called up. him. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He picked up. So I actually had a conversation with him and, you know, I, I it hadn't only from reading and I, I had, didn't know that he was like, like a big star with the biochemistry. And, but then I, I luckily wrote down his email correctly. Mm. And then I started emailing him and then he really got into explaining all the questions. You know, I had so many questions about why my body reacted like it did. Why did, why did I have my menstruation stop? Why I was also diagnosed with PCO, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. And then Ray could explain how that, how the low thyroid function actually created all that, those symptoms that I was struggling with. Mm. And then further, we got into diet and, and so forth, right? And, and medication he also helped with. Yeah. So do you feel like the thyroid for mm -hmm. all women is kind of the pinnacle of, of the hormonal imbalances that we're, that we're dealing with? Or do you think there are other deeper levels or deeper root causes or do you think if you can just manage your thyroid, you can get all of those other things to come into balance? Does that make sense? Um, yes. Well, I think actually mostly yes mm -hmm. to your question. Yeah. Um, the thing is, it's not only women's hormonal balance. Like everyone actually, as we, as we grow older, we will have a drop in thyroid function and creates a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And it's a wrong, according to me, a wrong strategy to try to fix too many of the other problems without at least checking the thyroid function, uh, right? Because if that one is, if, if thyroid function is off, it's so high up in the hierarchy of control systems that you need to fix that first. Maybe then you can have, you could say you can work on your estrogen dominance versus progesterone, right? You can work on that balance. But, uh, but I would say that if you have low thyroid function, you have a lot of the symptoms related. To, the problem is many of the symptoms overlap, right? What is yeah. estrogen dominance and what is low thyroid function? But at least testing pulse and temperature to see where I, if you have a super low pulse rate and you are very cold always and you have a, a low uh, body temperature too, and then then I would look into thyroid function and upping that. You might also work on another hormonal imbalance too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think thyroid is so central. Yeah. So I, if, if that was what you asked. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because some people will yeah. say it's just one thing, but I mean, I'm starting to realize that that's been the most overlooked component of my health throughout my entire yeah. life. And that yes. I've been working, doing, you know, gut health for 17 years almost. And, mm -hmm. and I still couldn't fix my, you know, the infertility and the heavy periods and the migraines, no matter mm -hmm. how much gut yeah. health that I did. So, yeah. So mm -hmm. that's exactly what my question was, because I certainly mm -hmm. think it's, um, it's really difficult to get past, uh, like you said, you're working mm -hmm. backwards almost, right. You're going uphill if you yeah. don't, address, if you don't. Yeah address your thyroid. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So why is it so the the standard of care is to to take a, a hormonal a, a thyroid panel, right? To take a blood labs and check the numbers, mm -hmm. but even the most subtle imbalances, like for example, when I test my pulse and temperature, it's it's well now it now it's starting to become in range, but prior to it when I started to learn about this, it was it was either low or it was really high. It depends. Like after I ate, okay. it would get high. And, and then when I wake yeah. up in the morning, it would be low. And those those imbalances or those out of range values, high or low, mm -hmm. are quite confusing because I thought, oh, maybe I'm hypothyroid. I mean, a hyperthyroid. What do you think mm. about hyper? 
I know Ray Pete has something to say about that, but what do you say about that? Yeah, and maybe I'm too influenced. But maybe my answer would be the same. But the 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 thing with hyperthyroid, you can't be hyperthyroid, like uh, have a really high thyroid function. But the thing is, it's actually usually people that have a high, uh, and if it's too high, it's of course a problem. But just a tiny bit high thyroid function, where you say, "Oh, why are you so warm?" and we are freezing in here, and you're just eating and eating and eating. That's basically the situation a teenager has, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that was they're, they're just reading, and they're like have a lot of energy, and they can run like uh, more than other. You know, they a baby and teenagers they naturally have really high metabolic rates, mm-hmm. and that's actually when people are doing best they're they're feeling better than if you have lower metabolic rate right Mm -hmm. so it's better to be slightly high than slightly low Mm. (laughs) um but what was your question if it's um yeah so you know um i think ray pete would say or was had has said mm. that it's most likely that you're you're actually chronically hypo that you know the yeah. the reason those elevated numbers are because you maybe you're running on adrenaline and cortisol and the, exactly uh, and exactly so, yeah and so the, it's, it's 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 a yeah what's a problem is that people go to the doctor and then they describe their symptoms their symptoms mm-hmm. are i can't sleep at night i'm i have anxiety i'm jittery i'm uh, i'm sweating all the time uh, or even i might lose weight right and then yeah. then uh, then it comes back with like maybe just normal thyroid uh, a normal thyroid panel according to the doctors maybe the tsh is just within range and a little bit high maybe but in and they will still be diagnosed with hypothyroid like high thyroid function because of those anxiety symptoms or it you know um over it's basically an over excitation of the cells mm. because in in low thyroid function you can't relax so you're running like your cells are just up there and sometimes people that are on estrogen uh, supplements of any kind uh, yeah birth control pills or hormone replacement ther- therapy they will actually uh, have some of the same symptoms because estrogen dominance actually also creates this over excitation of the cells where you become you feel energized but in reality it's not a it's not a real <laughs> uh, it's not a real it's not real energy you're more stressed in it's a stressed energy right yeah so. i mean i think that it's more common than we probably realize in young ki- in young children and and young adults maybe yeah. yeah yeah because that was certainly my issue and even though i had cold hands and feet I had mm. lots of energy, you know, I would have clammy, mm. clammy, cold hands and feet, yeah. but I had lots of energy. I was eating like crazy. I couldn't gain mm-hmm. weight, yeah. hyperactivity. Um, I wonder yeah. sometimes what the, you know, if we were to take the pulse and temperature of a lot of these ADHD children and children in the spectrum, I wonder, yeah. you know, how many of them yeah. are actually yeah. have subtle hypo. Um, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because um, some of the symptoms of low thyroid function are actually those. This is brain fog, right? Mm-hmm. Where you can't concentrate, uh, you can't sleep. The, your sleep is just off. Like you, mm-hmm. you can't fall asleep. You can't stay asleep. You become you. You start running on those stress hormones, and that maybe could lead to HDAD. <laughs> At least HDAD. It's these symptoms because what is that really? What is HDH? Exactly. It's an umbrella. Know. It's an umbrella yeah, of so many things. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's too many, even in, I think you're ahead of us regarding all that. But we are like, um, I've also been teaching chemistry in high school. So I know how many of the young people I actually now, they all have a diagnosis, which I think that's, that's a little excessive. Right. Like, are you? Right. Right. When we were kids, it was just misbehaved <laughs> hyper children, right? You're hyperactive. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. So, I so, don't know. Maybe, maybe something is happening, you know, with the foods and, you know, we are getting more low thyroid function. That could be. And that is creating some of those hyper weird. Uh, yeah. It's keeping us in that thing. fight or flight, fight or flight, you know, sympathetic yeah. where we're mm-hmm. always worried mm-hmm. and always afraid. And, uh, you know, certainly yeah. the stress levels that we're under. 
So when you find out officially, and then you had the armor, um, you got a hold of yeah. some armor and Ray Pete's information. How did you ultimately fix your hypothyroid or bring it into balance? Well, well, first of all, I got thyroid medication, right? So I was not on, I, I, that was a big, uh, like a big step in, in my recovery was the right kind of thyroid medication. And luckily I was started up on, Armor thyroid. And the important thing is that it contains both T4 and T3, both of the thyroid hormones mm -hmm. that we are naturally producing. Um, and why is that but, important? Because a lot of times, the, <laughs> you know, like the yeah. levothyroxine is only the yeah. uh, T3, right? Mm. Uh, T4. 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 So what? Um, yeah. So that's and, a storage hormone. Right. right. And so why, why is that important to people who have no idea? Yeah. 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 And you know, no, most people that are uh, treated for low thyroid function, even if they're lucky to get the diagnosis, they get the medication and the medication is a uh, level thyroid. What you do, it's T4. You said the yeah. English <laughs> name for it. <laughs> right. But it's, it's, it's me medications like Centroid, I think yeah. it's called in the United States. Yeah. Uh, there are also other brands, but basically it's just T4. Okay. And T4 is the storage hormone. It doesn't have any thyroid effect. It, it won't do anything to your cells. It needs to be converted into the active thyroid hormone T3. And so, the reason why... Was, okay, yeah, go ahead. I think you're about to answer. Yeah. Go ahead. Maybe, you know, if you can't convert it, you will be undertreated. Okay. And in worst case, you will start to even get poisoned from just keep if you keep pulling in putting in t4 to the system and you're not converting it to the active thyroid hormone t3 you actually some some doctors describe that how t4 goes in and sits on the receptors of t3 and pushes out the small amount of t3 you might be producing right mm. and then it blocks the t3 so it actually blocks active thyroid hormone wow and then you, you can even uh, go into a coma because that's what happens when you don't have enough t3 in your cells wow so 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 just some people do great on t4 that's, so that's what i was gonna say so something yeah. so that conversion happens in the liver mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so yeah. if someone is taking synthroid or levo they're taking that mm -hmm. and then they're they do better they're like i love it and it's probably because right. they're able to convert that Yes. And then some yes. women take it and they do great at first. And then three years, mm. even down the line, they're like, it's not working. Mm. I don't feel good. Yeah. I feel horrible. Yeah. They, 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 they increased it and yeah. I still don't feel good. So you're saying yeah. that if that happens, it's probably because these mm. receptor sites are almost burdened now and the liver is yeah. not converting. Yeah, it. maybe. Right? Or you're you're getting older and you have some other liver issues, right? You have some, especially women. Uh, um the high estrogen if you you know the older we get we we can be almost poisoned by our own estrogen mm -hmm. um right so so we have this estrogen excess and that weakens the liver so actually often it's women that have this conversion uh, difficulty uh young men that are healthy and only have a thyroid issue and are treated with a uh, uh, liver it's liver i can't say it, that works <laughs> I say level. T4. <laughs> yeah, yeah, T4. Levo. The, the storage home, when they're treated, they do fine because they have strong livers. But any person that is a bit sick, so even men, if they've been sick for a long time, have, have, you know, they're or they're drinkers, strong, they're 25 or they're, year old, yeah. just normal, strong men, then you will have, you'll, then you see the issues with, with, with the T4 medication. And doctors won't, I don't know why exactly, uh, because they, Previously, they were treating with a combination drug of T4 and T3, right? The natural desiccated thyroid, mm -hmm. like uh, Armour thyroid, that it was what the doctors prescribed. Then the medical companies synthesized the artificial hormones. And there's nothing wrong with using, actually, sometimes it's better to use the artificial hormones because they're more reliable, maybe, than Armour has somehow lost uh, the company that makes it and the other natural desiccated thyroid product. They are not, uh, you can't count on, it, on them as much maybe as you can't the synthetic hormones. But the problem is that people compare the T4 to Armour and that's not to be compared because one is a T43 medication and 
the other one is the T form education. Mm. So you can treat with with you can treat with a uh, with uh, with um, T four and T three artificial hormones, right? Mm. And that's a way, really good option, and that's most mo- in most cases the best option. Mm. You just need to know what you're doing, and doctors won't don't like to treat with T three because it's more difficult. You can't just say to a patient, go home with that one dosage of T4 and take it in the morning. You have to actually divide your doses of T3 out into small pieces, you know, and that, first of all, people have difficulty. They need to know exactly what they're doing. Otherwise, they will just do something wrong with an with a pure t3 medication yeah or yeah. they'll give up because it's a lot of work right yeah. sometimes i mean it's, it's a lot of enough. work and mm-hmm. and if you t- do it wrong basically you can get a lot of negative symptoms right and mm-hmm. that's what i'm experiencing with my clients they don't know ex- no doctor has really they maybe prescribed t3 but they don't know how to take it they um they they might take the whole day's dose in one go in the morning on an empty stomach, which is the worst thing you can do. Okay, that was because one of my so questions. Much T3, yeah, so much T3 in one go on an empty stomach, it will hit the blood immediately. And the body, because it's such an active hormone, can't it can't handle that. It, it can't use it for anything. So it just inactivates it. Oh, wow. And then you basically won't get any treatment, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, so and that's why using a T3 medication, you really need to uh, say, okay, I take a little piece and have this doses today. And I take a little piece in the morning with my breakfast, a little piece at lunch, a little piece at uh, my afternoon snack, a little piece at dinner and a little piece before bedtime, right? If that's how you are taking, that's how it's supposed to be taken but Mm. that's usually not what people do yeah and why is it so common for doctors to say eat on an empty stomach or take it with an empty take it right when you wake up why why i mean this sounds like completely contradicting yeah i think it's because they want maximum absorption fast maximum absorption Mm. but that's not I mean, it can be fine if you are on a T4 medication. You can do that. I would actually, I always, Ray Pete has always told me, take take your medication with thyroid medication with food. Mm-hmm. But for a T4 medication, it really doesn't matter. It's just a storage hormone. So it ha- doesn't have any activity. But what you do when you have any kind of T3 in your product, like if it's an artificial hormone T3 or it's a natural T3 from a desiccated thyroid, it's actually best to take it with food because then you will have that small piece of T3 and then it will be digested together with the food. So it will be released more slowly into the bloodstream mm. and your body will recognize there's a little bit of T3 coming now. And I'm good with that. Right. Mm-hmm. This is, this is, this is very physiologically correct. In So I'm not inactivating anything. I'm just getting a steady, small, amount out into the blood of t3 and that's how it's supposed to be okay i see so 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 that's why it's best with food if you're using t3 Mm -hmm. so um Mm. you know with bioidentical hormones they are Mm. um most similar to the hormones that we make ourselves and that's important mm. as opposed to like say premarin, which is the estrogen from horse, a pregnant mare urine, right? So how is it that the um, the uh, porcine or the, the pig desiccated thyroid or mm-hmm. beef desiccated thyroid, how is that, it, it, does it matter that it's not bioidentical and can there be a bioidentical thyroid product without it being from an animal? Actually, I think, uh, to my knowledge, both uh, all uh, synthetic and uh, especially the synthetic hormones are bioidentical. You have mm. just taken the thyroid hormone and you just copied the structure, right? In, in like synthesized it in a lab. Okay. So it is a bio. It, there's and that's also why if you do thyroid uh, um, uh, therapy correctly like you're treating with a thyroid medication there shouldn't be any negative effects from it like there shouldn't okay. be any list of side effects <laughs> okay because you're just replacing uh, what you're lacking right basically 
Because there are, there can be so many side effects from like taking yeah. bioidentical estrogen or progesterone, right? Or even yeah, pregnenolone and- or DHEA. <clears throat> yeah, but bioidentical, basically that term means that you have taken, that it's, it's exactly the same structure as the human body would make it. Okay. Right? Right. Uh, the, when you do a natural desiccated thyroid, um that's also i mean the pig is produce the same hormones as as we do okay um when you take the natural desiccated thyroid is 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 it's dried thyroid gland from a pig or a cow yeah <laughs> right so it's an animal thyroid cl- gland that they just dry and and and, and, and okay yeah and okay. then so so it should be by pretty and i think that hormone is, is also exactly the same as the one we produce okay so i'm not I don't think that that there is any the problem is if you yeah so I'm not really sure about your question about uh, side effects and bioidentical hormones the problem is if you are treating with the wrong hormones <laughs> right. even if they're bioidentical you will get some negative In, effects right? right so incorrect um yeah incorrect yeah so I guess I a long time ago uh my mentor Mm -hmm. used to say he when he was alive he used to say um you know it's so much better to use a plant-based melatonin because it's um because it's more similar to the melatonin that we make ourselves because he was very Mm -hmm. much against using uh a bovine melatonin because he said it isn't okay. cell resonant. And that always stuck with me. I don't know what the science is behind that, but it yeah. always stuck with mm-hmm. me and made me think, I wonder if that's why it's better to use bioidentical hormones versus and so versus synthetic. Yeah. But now mm-hmm. uh, with the thyroid, that's why my question was just, I was just curious yeah, if it was that, beneficial. That- all thyroid hormones, to my knowledge, are bioidentical. They're simply taking the same molecule structure like and then just copied it. So it's gotcha. bioidentical. Okay, but gotcha. there are problems with uh, the problem with bioidentical, just because you know the term bioidentical, just um, when people think, for instance, from for menopause treatment, when people say, okay, I'm using bioidentical hormones, so this should be good for me. So they can just use any of the hormones that we are naturally, like humans are naturally making. And then it's safe and it's uh, good because they are bioidentical. That's not completely true, right? Because you can you can mess up those hormones and make an imbalance of natural hormones too. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but but you are right. There are, when you talk about um, not bioidentical hormones, for instance, artificial not artificial pro progesterone mm-hmm. because when you go to the doctor the the, the progestins uh, are they are not the same molecules as natural progesterone and because they are not the same molecule they will also have an a negative you know then you have side effects from it right because uh, it's not natural so mm-hmm. so there's both side of the of the story you can use natural really bioidentical hormones wrong i and see you get some problems okay so i see <laughs> so basically let me see if i got this clear i think it just came clear to me which is yeah. the molecular structure when we say bioidentical it doesn't yes. matter if it's from a cow a pig and an alien if it's a bio it's molecularly s- the same the than structure ours structure is exactly the same okay right? but if it's synthetic so, but yeah. it can be synthetic and still be bioidentical but yeah. if you have something a hormone that is molecularly different than the one we produce mm-hmm. that okay i understand now like progestogens yeah. okay gotcha yeah okay and then um how if you are hypothyroid or if you just have yeah. a, a thyroid imbalances, can you treat or bring balance without using thyroid medications? Um, to a certain degree, yes. Uh, I mean, um, a lot of people are every day doing things that are naturally inhibiting their thyroid function. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the most important things are, are the fats that we are, we have started to change the fat of our diet in the old days. And when I say old days, I mean back in the 60s, mm-hmm. before all the smart food came in the supermarkets, when, 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 when the women were still cooking at home really from yeah. basics. And 
when we used also in restaurants and burger bars and whatever you you know even even the United States food uh, you know when you went for a burger or something it was made with butter right mm. it was fried and 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 maybe they had made the fries in lard uh, coconut oil actually or in 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 um in in some kind of animal fat right yeah, they uh, would like use this lard, lard or, or tallow mm -hmm. yeah exactly so that was the old way of doing it and those that's actually saturated fat and that doesn't harm the thyroid function it does not Sa saturated fats are okay for thyroid function but it's the unsaturated fat that we started using like in the 70s we came by oh god now we're not eating butter we're not eating coconut oil we are not doing the last thing because it was connected to the heart disease mm. so they made this connection and actually it's not never been biochemically proven that there's any connection between saturated fats and high cholesterol and uh, high cholesterol is uh, apparently <laughs> that has not even been proven to be connected to heart disease so the whole story but that story came into the media and to the nutritional world and then we shifted to use sunflower seed oil cotton seed oil flax seed oil all these oils that we had never been eating before and that's one of the big shifts in the western diet mm. and that's one of the things if you stay away from all those liquid basically liquid cooking oils mm -hmm. then you can help your thyroid function immensely wow and um i i thought uh, when I started to hear this from Ray yeah. Pete, I thought, you know, uh, I don't eat that much uh, PUFAs. I don't, which no. we're called, we're talking no. about polyunsaturated yeah. fat, the Those PUFAs. Yeah. I thought I don't eat that much. And then I read uh, one of the studies that Ray Pete had uncovered that was um, even just one meal with say, I don't remember the food he described, but it was just like, let's just say a potato chip or um, mm. you know, a salad dressing that has some um, mm -hmm. canola oil in it, mm -hmm. which every single restaurant uses because it's the cheapest, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Just one one meal, how much it mm -hmm. can change and inflame, create like inflammatory responses in the body, which probably yeah. begin at the thyroid, I would imagine, and the gut. And I was mm -hmm. so shocked because I thought compared to how I used to eat, I'm really good at not eating PUFAs, mm. but then I read his studies and I was like, oh, <laughs> I think I still yeah. eat enough yeah. to make a difference. It's yeah. hard to avoid them though, isn't it? It's super hard to avoid. You have to make all your food yourself basically, right? Mm -hmm. Or just stay to uh, milk. You know, if you're out, just eat very simply because any any prepared food, even if it's prepared by some of your friends who possibly include poofa, right? Because that's what they <laughs> use for cooking and the dressings, as you say. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it is a little bit hard and you need, of course, the most important thing is what you do every day day in and day out right mm. and if you're mostly cooking at home i think you're pretty safe i allow myself when i go out to friends or tomorrow we have a big big christmas party at at, at the work so i i'm allowing myself to um just eat what is what's there yeah but luckily our christmas lunch which is a old old danish tradition is uh you you it's based on all the old food right <laughs> so nice. it's like it's 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 it's, it's it maybe it's not so high in poop uh, as as other stuff might be yeah. but it is a problem going out right it is mm -hmm. a problem because yeah. if and just you can't eat in my country i can't find any potato chips without it being fried in a sunflower seed oil yeah yeah That's i just it. actually decided so I, uh huh yeah so you can't eat stuff like that. I just decided to, um, I have a dehydrator and I was craving salt and vinegar potato chips. So I'm going to try my hand at making my own salt and vinegar potato yeah. chips and see how that goes. Because I just yeah. grew up loving that. I loved chips and fries, yeah. and, you know, yeah. so it's a bummer, but okay. So you're saying, um, we can potentially treat our own thyroid or bring balance to our own imbalances if it is probably if it isn't too severe right and if you're doing all the other work like working on the gut and all of that yeah. um and then avoiding PUFAs what else can we do to help balance our thyroid uh 
today, actually, I've just been writing a small guide uh, for my <laughs> clients out there about uh, light therapy. Oh, right. Because um, light is very important for our hormonal balance. Uh, it's one of the, like, if you say thyroid hormone is important and progesterone is important and a uh, good diet is important then light would be on that same list like mm. right you can be really become really really sick in you if you live in darkness like in darkness i mean not going out in the daylight basically and um in my country we are now in you know the winter season meaning it's it gets dark around four or five in the mm. afternoon and then it's dark until eight o'clock next morning so you and then you are at work, right? When when the sun is out. So basically you can be months without getting any sun exposure. Mm. And that's unhealthy, right? So that's a factor. If you say diet affects thyroid function, light affects thyroid function, mm -hmm. right? So and so the does right it type of light. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that does that mean only going out into the sun, or can that also mean uh any kind of like treatment? infrared yeah. treatment or any red light exactly. treatment exactly exactly so okay. in my country there simply isn't enough light right even if i took a walk maybe if i really did it in a sunny day but a lot of days are even cloudy right so mm. it would be dark and when the sun is out it's cloudy so that's not enough anyways but sunlight is really good mm -hmm. like for people that are living in sunny places go out be out uh, like uh, during during the day maybe not not don't get a sunburn and don't you to use too many sun lotions because they contain so many weird chemi chemistry but mm -hmm. you, um, just go out enjoy the sun and avoid burning so in the afternoon enjoy the sun that's really healthy yeah um for other people that are not able to either go out or they live in, in my you know <laughs> in denmark or something similar um uh, light therapy yeah they, mm. and then you can use incandescent that's what i'm writing a guide on you can use incandescent bulbs and they also warm your room up mm -hmm. uh, or you can use leds right and then they have to be in those uh, wavelengths that are in the orange red wavelength okay uh, and actually infrared is too high um, yeah this you see we go wavelengths is is a yeah it's a difficult concept maybe but but infrared have too uh, high wavelength to actually do much to the body you need to be uh, around 600 to 700 nanometers in okay. order to have it be effective and that's uh, the orange red light infrared is mostly just heat Okay. So all those I know your people and some clients sometimes talk about infrared saunas. Mm -hmm. and they have invested in these big things, um, and you, yeah. Some of them have oh, actually red lights in them. Yeah. Like a, what? I have we have a we have an infrared sauna, yeah. and it has yeah. um it has a red uh separate yeah. from the heat lamps. It has a a, yeah. a light that yeah. you can change the color on. Yeah, so, right. Um, so you can so so I think it's mostly the light you will benefit from. I think warming up your body in in the winter time, like getting warm, that's also what thyroid hormone does, right? It rise, rises your <laughs> basal uh, body temperature. So actually, the warming up is also uh, healthy, but from a light perspective, it needs to be the light and not so much heat. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, um, okay, let's talk a little bit more about the progesterone and, um, oh, wait, well, we, I don't know that we completely finished the concept of can you balance your own hormones, so your own thyroid, so yeah. light, yeah. avoiding PUFA, diet. Yeah. Um, so when we talk about, I know Ray Pete is not a fan of the of the term Ray Pete diet. <laughs> I know he doesn't no. care for that, mm. but um, there is a bit of a repeat diet, isn't there? There is a bit of yeah. a lifestyle that he recommends. Yeah. And so that's yeah. going to help with thyroid. And what does mostly that entail? The the big ones, you don't have to go into all of them. That That's the, the proof of out and in with the saturated fats right mm. that's one of the big things mm -hmm. uh, he does eat a, quite a bit of sugar and that's not uh, to say that you should just uh, keep on you know white sugar that you can do a bit of white sugar but 
mostly it's fruit right and mm -hmm. he's very fond of so things like tropical fruits uh and and uh, the citrus family of fruits so mm -hmm. uh, especially oranges but you know all those citrus fruits basically uh, even i know people are uh, afraid of um what's that called in english uh great it's a grapefruit grapefruit the the reddish yeah, round the big yeah. one <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah because it has been connected to some hormonal uh, issues right a lot of like pregnant women are told not to eat grapefruit oh. or you know you know but um but i think that's if it's um ripe grapefruit then uh, then it's okay mm -hmm. so all the citrus fruits basically especially orange juice and then you get a lot of sugar from that mm -hmm. right and you also get a lot of minerals from the fruits and and vitamin C. So, he sees yeah. he sees sugar purely as mm -hmm. fuel. And when people hear mm -hmm. the word sugar and they say, "Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. his diet has sugar in it." That's that's feeds mm -hmm. cancer. That makes you fat. Mm -hmm. That gives you acne. Yeah. They're they're, yeah. they're usually talking about processed foods with sugar in them, packaged foods with yeah. sugar in them. But yeah. they're his healthy carbohydrates are like you said, citrus fruits. I think he likes dried fruit as well, right? Like dried fruits, yeah, like dried yeah, apricots, yeah. and um, yeah. and then orange juice for those who can handle orange juice. And then, um, but he doesn't really. He's not a fan of just regular orange juice, right? He prefers that you juice it yourself or that you have some kind of fresh squeezed, high quality juice. Yeah. Again, again, I, I I'm not so strict. Uh, and if you listen a lot to Ray Pete, you will hear that even he himself has for a long time used concentrate. Okay. like orange juice concentrate right mm. because if you it's it's about choosing if you if you are limited in some some areas in the united states i've heard are quite limited you know you go to yeah. the shop and you can't get you can't get like fresh fresh this and fresh that right and, uh, it depends a little bit where you are right but let's say you're limited or you're on a trip and you so actually just going into a small supermarket and finding uh, orange juice concentrate can be okay it's better as long than as nothing. it's just orange juice in the ingredients, right? You don't want to have any. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just orange juice or concentrate is fine. Like, but I know, and especially in your country, they start adding weird stuff to it, like sure. uh, other uh, taste enhancers or sugar and high or... fructose corn syrup and yeah, colors. Yeah, yeah, they add colors, yeah, yeah. sure. Um, yeah, natural flavors. And... Yeah, 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 yeah. So. So as long as it's a, it's a pure orange juice, even if it's if it's from concentrate, right? Mm -hmm. Again, it's actually about including orange juice in your in your regime or in your diet, and then not thinking it needs to be the perfect one. I need to squeeze them myself because then right. you'll never reach. <laughs> you'll never reach that's, it, that's, right? Like so, and you we are busy, right? Mm -hmm. we're busy so we can't we we can't be perfect all the time of course if you like it would be best if you uh had, like had the orange tree, orange tree in your garden all right <laughs> that's right yeah but, um yeah so so just things like that and i mean so fruit and low starchy fruit is basically his big thing and mm -hmm. uh, so something like melons um all kinds of melons Mm -hmm. um orange juice without pulp that's maybe his that's maybe more important than it's freshly squeezed that it's mm -hmm. actually just because they add in the pulp afterwards and some there has been some i think he talks about that it's actually not just pulp it's actually also plastic pieces that are in that artificial oh. pulp that they, add, that they add back in to the juices so wow. actually pulp free juice are better Okay. So any fruit juice, actually, right? It can also be um, something like grape juice. Okay. Right? It's yeah. super sweet, but it's mm -hmm. very anti-inflammatory. Um, there's a lot of, of, of fruits that are low starch that you can use. Um, and what? Why? And then he's big on, yeah. He's big on what? Milk. <laughs> Milk, of course, dairy. Right. And Yeah, so that's. And I know he's not Why? really particular in that way either. I mean, he does say lower percentages of fat, like 2% or mm -hmm. not on um, the whole fat because that's very high calories, which I learned very quickly when I switched back on to dinner. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, <laughs> it's a lot of fat. No, you know, again, calories. again, especially from the United States, when I have clients, I, I do a video counseling with people from all over the world 
world, especially from the United States. Mm -hmm. And the, what they always tell me, oh, I, I, I have a local, uh, you know, uh, farmer and I pick up, uh, you know, a fresh uh, milk that are unpasteurized and, you know, so uh, high quality product. First it's $20 all, dollars a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> it may, yeah, it's also yeah. expensive. It, first of all, it's very high fat usually, right? So it'd be cream on top <laughs> and then you have really a high fat product. Second, uh, some people get super sick if it's unpasteurized because all the, the bacteria that can be in milk, right, when it's unpasteurized. Mm -hmm. um, so again, just going to your normal supermarket, picking up, a, you know, more commercial <laughs> milk. I know that in the United States, you add in vitamin A and D to some of your milks. And maybe that's not the best thing, but... If you're not allergic to the way that, that people can be allergic to the way they have added those in. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, 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 but just and more commercial milk and it doesn't have to be organic, you know, milk is to, to begin with a really safe product. And even if it's non organic, it's also a quite clean pro product. Really? So, so even though the cows yeah. are eating, let's say they're grain fed and they're, and the grain mm. is pa is uh is is mm. sprayed with pesticides. Doesn't that yeah. show up in the breast milk? Because it certainly shows up in the breast milk of women when they eat pesticided yeah. foods. Yeah, I'm not saying that it's like maybe it is the best if it is organic, right? But yeah, um, wow. but uh, because cows cows are have a different whole digestive system than. <laughs> it's we ultra do. processed so they actually yeah they have like these uh, several stomachs that things go through right so it becomes really clean product mm. uh, again if you are out traveling and you maybe you're when you're home you have your organic uh, milk uh, but when you're out traveling go even buy one of these and especially in like i'm from europe so south of europe that will have like ultra you know ut uh, ut Oh, it's ultra pasteurized? Eight. Yeah, high, okay. high. You know, when they have heated it up and it's not on, it's not in the refrigerator. It's actually just on the shelves because oh. it's like. Oh, like evaporated milk like, or something? Yeah. It's not no. a powder, but it's still, it's still, you know, it's just so treated so, with so, mu so much heat yeah. for, for so long time. So it's ultra pasteurized. And that just means that maybe the nutritional value is a bit lower, but it's still a good product. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. It's so, so can, fascinating can, yeah. because for so yeah, long, so can... you know, I've always kind of uh, mm. steer, steer, especially women with hormone problems. And then I started to mm. learn that, you know, how wrong I was about that. And it was just kind of like going around in the nutritional world that dairy was just not good for you. It's, oh, it, yeah. it's mucus yeah, yeah. forming yeah. and inflammatory and um, yeah. But I think the the what you just said was key, which is go and try the different milk. So if you think that you're yeah. you have a milk sensitivity, unless you're yeah. somebody who has a severe allergy to one of yeah. the com the components of milk, it's worth uh, experimenting with different types of milk. Like I I found out that I cannot do. Um, ultra pasteurized. I'm, I do better okay. if it's just regular pasteurized or homogenized, okay. but not, okay. and then raw milk I do well with, but it's okay. so high in fat. So yeah, yeah, I think people can just, um, try to, uh, experiment and see what works mm. best. Just get like a small mm. amount of the milk and see, because mm. I think it's something we've been told not to, not to do anymore. And it's a shame, isn't yeah. it? Because it's such a, yeah. a superfood, right? Yeah. It's a super food and it's a whole meal also, right? We are busy. Like if I'm super busy and I am, I have a high thyroid function, right? I'm on thyroid medication, I need food. Yeah. And I have, let's say I have a really busy day. If you drink like a lot, like a big glass of cold, ice cold milk, right? Mm. Then that's a whole meal. Yeah. You don't, you can just run a couple of hours more. It's um, hydrating as well, isn't yeah, it? More than water. Yeah, and it's full of calcium and protein and good fats. And milk also contains a tiny bit of progesterone, actually. So it is, uh, yeah. So it's nice. like, it supports your hormonal balance in a lot of ways. Um, and I'm even, I can <laughs> tell you, I'm a lactose intolerant. What? I, I don't know how that happened. 
but I actually, and I am not completely lactose intolerant, but if I drink too much milk that is not lactose free, I get a bit of diarrhea. So oh, I wow. have to actually, and I've asked Ray again, you know, we have in my country, we have just lactose free milk is non-organic. It's from our biggest milk producer in Denmark. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, and it tastes really good. So I'm doing lactose free most of the time, mm. like, right so and 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 according to Ray Pete, you should be able to build, work yourself out of that lactose intolerance i have not found that completely to be true for me so what i do is that i eat you know i have i eat a lot of milk products mm -hmm. so i can eat ice cream with a bit of you know there's lactose i can eat a lot of cheeses i don't have a problem with cheeses i can mm -hmm. do a little bit of milk especially if it's heated up um like uh, then i'm not th somehow something happens to the lactose it's just anything that's heated doesn't produce the same interesting the so i actually when but when i do like drink because i do drink a large amount of will you know i ha i also you know I, I i do lactose free and you can do that because what they've done, they just added the enzyme that you're lagging a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you just have pre-digested it for yourself. I see. That's it. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So can yeah. you talk, since what you brought up progesterone, can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit about um, the importance of, um, of, wait, I have a question here. Let's see. Yeah. Progesterone, the importance of vitamin A for hormones. That's not something a lot of people think about. Like when you think about hormones, I think mm -hmm. the first nutrient most people think about is magnesium. And can you tell yeah. us why vitamin A is so important for hormones? Um, yes. <laughs> vitamin A is important because it's very central up again it's about finding where it's uh, where where do we produce hormones from basically right we produce hormones from cholesterol mm -hmm. because all steroid hormones uh, th thyroid uh, hormone is not produced from cholesterol but all the steroid hormones meaning uh, the first one is pregnenolone so cholesterol is turned into pregnenolone and then from pregnenolone we produce progesterone dhea and then it comes further down. Then we come to testosterone, estrogen, and all the other uh, hormones, also the cortisol and so, so forth. Mm -hmm. But so we need to turn cholesterol into pregnenolone to produce, for instance, progesterone. Right. <laughs> and vitamin A is needed in that conversion. Okay. So we can't convert from cholesterol to pregnenolone. If we don't have enough thyroid hormone, vitamin A and light, actually. Mm. So that's also why it's, so it's central to our hormonal production, basically, right? Yeah. Then I think also like a, a, a vitamin A uh, in has a lot of anti-estrogenic compo, uh, compo, like a, it's very anti-estrogenic in a lot of uh, processes. Okay. Um, so that's also why it can work on, you know, it's and, and for the skin, it's also important, right? It's, it's often anti-aging thing, something about cell turnover and cell renewal. So it has a lot of effects. But when you say hormones and how does it affect, it's actually, it, it's needed for that conversion. Directly. Right? So, so what we can it, produce all our hormones. Yeah. So then... Um, vitamin A, you can get it from a mm. lot of vegetables, but that's, then mm -hmm. the body has to convert that from the vitamin mm. A that is in the vegetables to mm. the usable retinol, right? Vitamin A retinol. And that's mm -hmm. that, that conversion, at least this is what I just recently learned that conversion mm. for someone who has gut issues may not happen. So I was having mm. some anemia and serious hormonal mm. issues a while back and I was just feverishly eating carrots for summer. I was addicted. I could not uh, stop eating them. And my uh, my friend, you might know about Morley Robbins. He said mm. to me, um, he said, your, your body was trying to convert that vitamin A into retinol mm. to use to, you know, up, oh, yeah. upset, mm. to get more progesterone or whatever. Mm. And, mm. Um, but I couldn't convert that. Um, what do you think about that? And is yeah. that vitamin A retinol? Can you take it as a supplement, vitamin A? Because I rarely, I don't ever recommend okay. that because I don't really know much about yeah. those types of, of vitamin A. 
Yeah, um, that's a good question. I mean, I know people, I think if I remember correctly, now you catch me on my vitamin A biology. <laughs> but if, that was if actually a question sent to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, great. If, if you, I, as I remember, it's vitamin B12 that is needed in the conversion. Of the vitamin A to the retinol. Yeah, for the vitamin A. And so you need to be high in that too. But the problem is if you eat a lot of carotene and think that that's going to be converted into vitamin A, um, the problem with carotene itself, if you just overload yourself on carotene, I do recommend a vitamin A supplement sometimes to people, but it's I never recommend it in the form of carotene. And that's because carotene, and that's a little bit complex to understand, but if you look at the, the chemical structure mm -hmm. of uh, of carotene, it's actually similar to PUFA. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. It's, uh, it's actually anti-thyroid. Uh, that doesn't mean that the small amount of carotene you get in, uh, you get it in, 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 in like carrots, as you say, and other vegetables that have that color, you know, red and orange vegetables. But don't, don't actually, when you have, let's say you're hypothyroid and you eat a lot of carrots and you can almost turn yellow. Your like I have your can get yellow, right? <laughs> Yeah. Right. And that's actually because hypothyroid people have, you know, that it's a typical thing that they build up all this carotene. They can't convert it. So that's also an issue. And that's actually a sign of hyperthyroidism. Of course, if you like overload yourself on carotene, anyone can possibly get yellow, right? Yeah. But yellow hands, like that's actually one of the what the doctors in the old time looked at. Oh, you, you're not converting the carotene, you're getting into vitamin a so you're just <laughs> building it up wow. like in your palms and you're you're getting yellow right yeah so so actually so 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 it can be a sign of hypothyroidism and i think b12 is also needed in the conversion um then because when you get vitamin a from animal source it's not beta carotene it's it's a real like retinal mm. <laughs> form and you and so so actually it's more uh, the way you want it so m more from liver and eggs and milk so the things that are already part of the so-called rapey diet like liver egg milk milk you know yeah i would rather get it from there and usually if you just have a diet like that most people don't need enough more vitamin a mm -hmm. they don't need more than is provided because that's already quite high in vitamin a right these these foods Right. But there can be can be situations where 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 vitamin A supplement, but not I would not never recommend I would me, recommend the real like vitamin Good A source, not the mm -hmm. precursor to vitamin A. Yeah, yeah, incredible. Okay, and then um a, yeah. a couple more questions. So, um, <laughs> I you know it, with the Ray Pete thing, I was very sad to find out that coffee uh was was encouraged because I am not a very yeah. good coffee drinker. Um, okay. But I think it was Kate Deering who encouraged me to, mm -hmm. to try just an ounce with a lot of milk yeah. and, and a lot of honey. Yeah. And that yeah. has really changed, changed my ability mm -hmm. to process. But I think it was Keith mm -hmm. Littlewood who said, this is a reflection of your liver function. If you can't handle coffee, yeah. But I never really yeah. fully understood what that means. What's wrong with my liver if I can't yeah. handle coffee? Yeah, what is it? It's, I, I think it comes back to blood sugar. And a lot of people, like, I hear it all the time. Oh, I can't drink coffee. I get, I, I can't, I, I stay up all night. And I, 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 my, me, myself, I don't drink coffee that late in the day, right? But I can drink coffee all day and sleep perfectly during <laughs> the night. Or... But the worst thing you can do is actually do black coffee on an empty stomach. Okay. That way, a lot of people, including myself, sometimes get a little bit shaky, um, you know, uh, and it's basically the blood sugar that's a little bit off. You know, the same feeling comes from when your low blood sugar starts shaking a little bit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's too much. And somehow the coffee in coffee um, promotes your cellular energy or you 
you use so much energy, you know, it pushes you forward, you know. So if mm. you don't have anything with it and you're just doing it on an empty stomach, it's like taking a huge amount of T3 on an empty stomach, you become <laughs> a little bit shaky. Okay. You know, so don't do that. Uh, it's too much. Uh, so 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 the, the coffee with milk and, and you can do honey, but you can also just do sugar, mm -hmm. uh, just normal white sugar. You can do, yeah, the... The way that means you get a little bit of other foods too, right? That stabilizes your blood sugar while mm -hmm. you're pushing yourself forward. Yeah. Um. So some people need to only have coffee with like larger meals, and mm -hmm. then they do okay. Mm -hmm. so yeah. You have a large meal, and then you have like coffee. Oh, fine. Yeah. But don't do it like when you're just uh, and then just taking a small cracker, and then that's it, and then you <laughs> can't do coffee because yeah. it's not enough food. Simply, it's that. Mm -hmm. So you I definitely on, use forward. the milk, and I put mm -hmm. colostrum and uh, some collagen, yeah. honey, vanilla, yeah. cinnamon. It's like a dessert. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, if I just put a little too much, yeah, I definitely will get jittery. But I have. Yeah. So then, you know, my I was telling my mom that I was going to start drinking coffee again, and she said, "Why though? Why?" And I said, "Because the benefits." She drinks coffee every mm -hmm. day of her life. And it's because mm. of the, the benefits are, you know, irrefutable. Mm. Like you just, it's, so I want to mm. take, I want to participate in those benefits. <laughs> so I really yeah, have been trying I mean, to train myself. Yeah. Coffee is a must for me in the morning. Otherwise I'm not getting anything done that day would be off. I would have to go and buy coffee in order to come to work. I think. Well, so doesn't that, <laughs> doesn't that say, but doesn't that say that there's some kind of like, not addiction, necessarily, right? not just not just addiction, but your body isn't mm -hmm. able to function without this caffeine yeah. boost. And is yeah. that necessarily good? Or is it like, oh, let's stop being so particular and just use it because of all the benefits and stop worrying about whether or not it's an addiction, <laughs> you know, because there aren't really any side right. effects to that, are there? Like negative no. side effects to ongoing coffee consumption? I don't think so. I think uh, the more you drink, the he healthier you are, actually. Mm. It helps the liver. It helps the brain. It, it prevents even Alzheimer and things like that. So wow. it's, ve it's very anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is a bit of an addiction. I don't think it's a, so, like, I have never heard people that can't, you know, like, like it's a drug that then you yeah. can go to a clinic to <laughs> stay away from coffee. <laughs> I think if you if you had to, like... Then you then you could right, but yeah. it, it's 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 just uh, you're right. People so aren't people up, aren't throwing their lives away. <laughs> They're not throwing no, their exactly. lives away because they drink too much coffee. <laughs> but, right? but but it's like people being addicted to uh, Coke, right? Coca Cola or something. I mean, it's the coughing in it. I think it is a bit of an addiction. But the problem is, is it a, is I think the coughing you get a bit addicted to it, but it has so many benefits, right? So, so, so it outweighs so, yeah. the, yeah, yeah, as long as you have access to it. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. And then the last even, question. Even Coke or Coca Cola contains coffee and even tea, some tea, right? But tea has a little bit of coffee. In. So it's like, yeah, yeah, caffeine in it. So it's, it's not, it's not, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I love it. I love it all, especially now that Ray Pete said that the that the yeah. Mexican Coke is okay to drink once in a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. The what do you think? I'll just wrap it up with this last question, and that's mm -hmm. um, uh, what do you think about vitamin D and supplementing vitamin D? Yeah. Actually, again, I just wrote a small guide on that because that's something that a lot of people ask, right? Vitamin D is super important. I mean, it's so important that you can't distinguish its function from thyroid and light and progesterone. So it's in the same category as, as those things, right? So people that are low in vitamin D are really suffering, right? They get so many symptoms and a lot of the symptoms are similar to a hormone balance or a low thyroid function. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely important. There's a lot of confusion about around vitamin D because uh, people maybe don't understand the the chemistry of it. But we take vitamin D3 as a supplement, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's converted um, in the liver 
to the storage form of vitamin D, 25 hydroxy vitamin D, mm-hmm. the storage form. And that form is, is actually the one that is good, beneficial, has a lot of anti inflammatory um, things uh, yeah. with it. Then you then if you are low in D3 or you're low in calcium, if you are like running really low on those two things, your body goes into a kind of an emergency situation mm. and um, it actually starts converting the storage form, the good form of vitamin D into something called activated vitamin D. And it sounds like this is the active good form, but this is the activated vitamin D is actually what's what's uh, so dangerous to have too much of because it's connected with inflammation. So it's like, um, and you can't stop the formation of active vitamin D by not eating any D3. Okay, say that one more time. Yeah, some people try to, yeah, like, let's say that activated vitamin D, it is the bad form of vitamin D, right? Right. But it comes from vitamin D3 that we like, right? So we supplement with vitamin D3, then it's turned into a storage form, which has all these benefits. And then if you're low in the storage form or in vitamin D3, uh, uh, and your calcium some some emergency me- mechanism goes into comes into place and then you take the little bit of storage vitamin d that you have which are good which is good and then you activate it into another form of vitamin d which is where it creates inflammation mm. and when you when you are in that situation when you start like emergency turning the little bit of storage form into activated form of vitamin d then you 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 are in a situation where you have high uh, parathyroid hormone, you have some high inflammatory markers, and it's mm-hmm. actually not good. So the best way to avoid that situation is to have enough of the storage form, thus eating a lot of D three in your diet. Mm-hmm. If that, but but it's 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 a little bit complex vitamin D because you have these steps of activation, yeah. <laughs> and some and the last activation step is bad, right? So you could feasibly be taking of a, a vitamin D. Let's say everyone's talking about D three and K two. You could mm-hmm. be taking D three and K two, and if your levels aren't going up you could actually mm. be doing this this process at the end there where you're not where you're activating it yeah maybe um, yeah yeah i think it's actually when you are low when you have a diet low in d3 and calcium okay you you your body comes into an emergency situation where your parathyroid hormone rises so we have four glands around uh, in the par- up here in the neck mm-hmm. and they measure calcium metabolism so when they sense that they have low calcium intake and low d3 intake that hormone will be secreted in in higher amounts so you have high parathyroid hormone pth Mm -hmm. and that high parathyroid hormone is an inflammatory marker you you don't want to have high parathyroid hormone on a blood test it goes in and it actually takes the small amount of storage vitamin D that you have and activate it in an, in an attempt to correct things. And then we have an, like the activated vitamin D in itself is also inflammation, inflammation promoting the parathyroid hormone in itself is inflammation promoting. Mm. So you need to lock that system down by eating enough D3 and calcium. And that is the dairy eggs um yeah. what else would you what else comes to mind yeah i I would supplement with, with vitamin d mm-hmm. right and do you Especially recommend it with the k2 yes i mean k2 is good uh it's a very expensive vitamin yeah yeah <laughs> but it, it it pulls let's say it pulls in the same direction so it like let's say we want the calcium not to be pulled from the from the bones to the blood. We want the calcium in the bones, strong bones, and and low calcium level in the blood. Okay. Uh, and and K helps with that. It helps keeping the parathyroid hormone down. Mm-hmm. So it just helps not active uh, activating the vitamin D. So K two helps with that. That's mm-hmm. true. So wow. Um, yeah. 
I mean, it sounds like a lot, you know, you keep talking about the conversion of things and the mm. conjugation mm. of things. And it really mm. seems like, uh, yeah, thyroid is so important. All of these different glands and, mm. and our, and hormones mm. are so important, but it sounds mm. like the liver is just like the king here. Like ah, it yeah. really needs yeah. uh, so much and support. And you know what? Yeah, the liver needs a lot of support. The mm. most important vitamins for the liver are, B, are all the B vitamins, like mm -hmm. a B complex every day can be good for people that are, you can eat liver and get a lot of vitamin B there or liver pate or anything mm. like that. But if you're not a big liver fan <laughs> and you want to supply, do something good for your liver, it, it needs a lot of B vitamins to, to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. And the funny thing is it loops back a low thyroid function again, makes the liver underperform. Wow, and then you and then you can't activate your thyroid for, uh, thyroid hormone. Can you see how? And then you're just stuck. Yeah, and you can't detoxify estrogen when your liver is low, and estrogen just builds up and further lowers the thyroid function. Then the liver function gets even further down, and that's how people get sick. Really, right? What a mess! So now, now, yes, it's a mess. <laughs> it is. But you're right. Liver function is very central. Yeah. I mean, you just described so many of my members in my estrogen dominance support group on Facebook who are so yeah. frustrated because it feels yeah. like they're stuck in this loop. And yeah. I was certainly stuck in that loop. And, um, yeah. but I guess you just have to keep on, uh, persisting with all of the things, trying to bring balance to the thyroid, et cetera. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you can bring like, let's say you have been spiraling down into like low, low thyroid function, estrogen dominance, uh, ineffective liver, uh, poor digestion, right? Yeah. Everything goes together. It's like that. Low body temperature, uh, can't sleep during the night, you know, all these things. Then sometimes you can just do one of the things like increasing the thyroid function and that will pull your whole system up if you have a good diet mm -hmm. sometimes you just need to do more things at the same time i think you asked previously can you can you improve uh, hormonal balance with thyroid what is most important progesterone or thyroid but it also depends on how sick you are right mm. because the sicker we are the more systems we have to work on in the at the same time in order to pull your body from that spiraling down mm. so some people might need both liver support in the form of good vitamins uh they need progesterone supplementation they need thyroid supplementation they need to do the light thing they need to you yeah. know they need to do everything correctly in order to get out of that downward spiral right now yeah. you see telemed you see clients some um, through Telemed comp oh, yeah. calls. Yeah, I, I like we do here. I don't yeah. use Zoom, but I use uh, I use uh, I use Google Meet, which is just the same, right? Yeah. We send I send a link to my clients. So clients come in, and I have clients from all over the world. Actually, a lot of clients from the United States, Australia. Yeah. Well, I'm excited because I think one of the missing components in our group, the missing things that mm -hmm. we have so much help. There are so many resources, but when it comes to thyroid, women feel very stuck with how to go move forward, and so. So, um, I'll be excited yeah. to share your info with them. Do you have yeah. anything you want to share with us that I maybe didn't cover or that you want to talk about? Oh. Well, I could talk a little bit, bit my, about my homepage, but what I actually do is uh, I must say I'm very inspired by Ray Pete, right? Dr. Ray Pete. And he, mm -hmm. because I felt when I studied biochemistry, I was sick with hyperthyroidism and I just got so well enough to start my biochemistry studies. And then, so I actually followed Dr. P's research while studying biochemistry, right? And just made a lot of sense, mm. you know? Um, so it was a good combination. But what I do today, because Ray Pete's uh, research, let's face it, can be quite difficult to understand. Yeah. And it's very, he's, he, he, I think his mind works differently than our <laughs> He just has so many thoughts and so much biochemistry and it just comes out in one go. No uh, headlines and anything he writes is just a stream, <laughs> stream of, of thoughts, stream of basically. consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So and, and I'm like, even me sometimes I'm sitting there with his articles. Yeah. Um, but um, but I feel that he is the only one that, you know, system. He has made like a pattern of the body in such a way in his mind 
that he can somehow always explain things. Things are connected now. It's not the liver does this, the thyroid does this, the heart does this, the digestion. You know, everything is connected. So you can talk about holistic things, right? Mm. But it sounds so uh, alter alternative <laughs> yeah. to say holistic. But it is really holistic, mm -hmm. his view on it. So what I do, because it's his research is so difficult sometimes, I actually systemize, put it into, you know, guides and everything is online, right? So I have like e-books, e-guides, e-diet plans, you know, things like that. Great. So people can just sit and, and read that. And then I do uh, online counseling. Okay. So you're basically yeah. taking Ray Pete's information mm. and you're combing through it for the layman yeah. so that um, I can look at it yeah. and say, oh, okay, I get then, this. That's great. Yeah, and then I I try in my material to explain some biochemistry, right? But in a way so that you just know why you're doing this, mm -hmm. right? And then I often come with a product recommendation, right? I have like a light therapy uh, lamp or I have, a, you know, then there's a link to that. And since I have, when I have all these clients from around the world, there's some often a European link and a US link. So, so everybody has, you know, the... The, the, the possibility to buy some of these things i don't sell any physical products myself so i don't i just recommend things okay uh, you know i Great. recommend uh so yeah good that's well, what i do mm -hmm. lovely i think it's uh right up our alley in my group we have twenty two thousand yeah. plus members and they're yeah. always crying out for help, especially with thyroid stuff. So it would be great yeah. to, to introduce yeah. them to your stuff. And again, I should maybe just mention, I don't prescribe medication, but I do help people, you know, understand what it is. If their medication, maybe they take it wrongly or great. maybe they should ask for another type of medication. So I know a lot about medication. Oh, good. And in some countries, you can also buy over the counter thyroid products that do work, but just you know, don't require a prescription. So yeah. it's a little bit, yeah. That's wonderful. Mm. That's good news. They're going to be really yeah. excited to hear this. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate yeah. you.